God to have his perfect will today. Why don't we just lift our hands as the man of God comes and let's ask God to have his perfect will in his perfect way. Can we, gracious God, we're thankful so much for the word of God to hear. We're thankful so much for the lives that you're going to touch today, for the lives that you're going to change today. And I'm asking God now for there be a special anointing and a special unction of the Holy Ghost to rest upon the remainder part of this service. Uh, God, talk to us uh, and let us know when we leave this place that we have been in your presence today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Brother Holly, preach to us today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Why don't you just turn around and grin at somebody. Amen. A merry heart doth good like a medicine. You may be seated. God bless you. What an honor. What an honor it is to be here today. I would pay honor to our longtime friend, Brother and Sister Mark and Tail, and uh, their son. Wow, he should have went ahead and preached. My Lord. He kept on, I'd have given him an offering, but since he stopped, I'm not going to give him anything. But uh, to the music program, how good you mixed old songs with new songs, and I like all of that. You have a beautiful facility here. You have a beautiful spirit. Beautiful spirit comes from beautiful people. Amen. So we are thankful to be here. My first time to meet Brother Smith. I don't know why our paths haven't crossed through the years. I traveled all over the country. I preached many years ago for Brother Gambling. I preached for Brother Hoyt. I preached for Brother Edwards. I preached for all these guys, but for some reason, I guess the Lord saves the best for last. I'm honored. I'm honored to have my wife with me. Wow. I'm telling you, I had a heart attack a few years ago, and she just waited on me. I'm talking about it, it was un- incredible. And I told somebody that I would never get over that heart attack. <laughs> because if you get that kind of treatment with a heart attack, who wants to get over a heart attack? Oh, my goodness. I'm glad to be here. Yes, sir. I, um, yes, sir. I, I sit there and I thought, Brother Smith, how long have you been here? 48 years. 48 years. Wow, that's a, that's, a, that's a tremendous record there. Yes, and, I, and I thought, you know, what, what could I preach that hasn't already been preached? And I thought about a story that I heard many years ago of this couple. And you know how we make New Year's resolutions. Well, they were, their, their New Year's resolution was to lose weight. How many hates losing weight? Oh, man. It, it's, it's terrible. It is, it's, inc- it's, it's fearful. It's it's torturing to have to lose weight. I'm honest with you. But uh, so this couple, they said, we're going to lose weight. So they went down to the health food store the first day of January. And they just bought up all kind of health food. Oh, man, it, their cupboard was full of health food. Well, about six weeks later, they decided to go back and buy some more. And when they walked in, there was a minor bird, a parakeet, in a cage. And it said, you're fat. (laughs) Well, they laughed about it and went on. A few weeks later, they came back and walked in, and that bird said, you're fat. 
Well, they was already getting worn out with the diet and kind of got upset with him. So they went to the owner and said, told the owner what the bird had been doing. So the owner went over there, he went over there and he opened the cage up and stuck his hand in there and he just kind of slapped the little old bird a little bit. And so about four or five weeks later, they came back in and they was wondering what the bird was going to do. So they, with the Smith, they walked in, just kind of walked around, see what he would do. Bird just looked at him. They walked down one aisle, and just as they got ready to turn the corner, the bird said, Wah! You know. <laughs> so what, what could I preach this morning that you don't already know? But as human beings, we have to be reminded sometimes about the goodness of God. Especially when we're walking through some very uncomfortable situations. I want to encourage you today. I felt, and I, I feel him on me right now. I feel him on me right now, and I know when I feel it. The Lord wants to take some of you from where you are. And take you to a place that you have desired to be, but it's a struggle. It is a fight. I, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is going to settle in this room in a little while. So at those words, I want to turn your attention to the word of the Lord. <clears throat> I want to turn your attention to the book of St. Mark. I want to read some very familiar passages of scripture, but... Tucked away in these scriptures are some of the most valuable lessons that you will ever learn. St. Mark chapter 4 and verse 36 says, And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with them other little ships, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, Master, what about me? What about us? Carest not that we perish. I want to talk to you this morning from this subject. He's my God too. You're not going to get all the blessings. I'm going to step into the arena. And I'm going to get what I need because if he's your God, he's mine too. You can shout, I can shout. If you can lift your hands up in the midst of disaster, I can, I can lift. He's my God too. Praise God. Whew. You may be seated. Lord bless you. Each of us as individuals, each of us as individuals must work diligently on our relationship with God. Success, power, victory, and deliverance is not something that you accidentally how? You don't just stumble up on it one day and say, oh my goodness, I've got victory. No. It doesn't work that way. But it takes sure determination. It takes a purposed heart. It takes working diligently. It takes sacrifice. It takes sure determination. You and I must always understand that our relationship with God is, a, is spiritual. It is not because of the bread. It is not because of the loaves. It is not because of the fishes. It is not because of the miracles. It is because I want a relationship that when I do not have the bread, I still love him. 
Now, I'm going to preach tonight on a re relationship, and I don't want to get too far into my message this morning with that. But I'm going to live for God when the bread's not being set on the table before me. That's my desire. I'm going to live for God when the sun is shining. But if I get up one day and the darkness has covered my life, I want to still be able to lift up my hands and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Amen. If I'm not feeling a miracle, I still want to be able to get up and come to church and say I don't feel anything, but I know some stuff. I've walked through the valley today, but I believe God's got a mountaintop waiting for me. My relationship is spiritual. It's not based on anything that if I have or don't have, I know my relationship is going to be spiritual. Amen. When Jesus, when Jesus asked the question to the disciples, he said to them, who touched me? And did you know the disciples did not have a clue of what was going on or what had just happened? And they looked at him and said, Now, Lord, we've had throngs of people around you all day long. And I've watched this one touch me. And I've watched that one touch you. Touch you. So I, I, what do you mean? He said, But there was something happened. There was purpose in that touch. It was not just to be among the crowd and say, Oh, ah, I saw something. But I'm going to tell you, I felt something leave out of me. It went somewhere to a need. Oh, I want to preach to somebody this morning uh, that there is a touch that you can have that will stop God right in his track. Uh, and he said, oh, angel, uh, I want you to go down to her. I want you to go down to him. I want you to walk into this situation. I want you to walk into that situation. Uh, I want a miracle to happen today. Uh, I want something to change today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. People struggle. There are people in this building. And I, and I do not brag when I say this, but the Lord has allowed me to preach all over our country. Everywhere I go, I preach to huma humanity. Humanity has problems. Some of you in this building this morning, it is easy for you to walk in with a Pepsi Dent smile on. It is easy for you to walk in and somebody say, how you doing? And you stick out your hand, Brother Smith, and say, oh, Pastor, I'm doing great. But down inside there is a struggle. Down inside there is a fight. Down inside there is a battle. And so our relationship with God has got to be spiritual. Now that does not mean that God's not concerned about our physical aspect. I mean, you can lift your hand and say, God, our Brother Holly, I have had miracles in my life before. How many has ever had a miracle? And you know without a doubt that it was none oh, it was none other than the hand of God. It was none other than the love of God. It was none other than the mercy of God. So when I talk about our relationship with God, has got to be a spiritual relationship. I'm not taking us away from the fact that God is concerned about our physical needs. And how many has ever had a financial blessing? And you know, you know, you know that down in that pocket, it was empty. And somehow God walked into that situation. So when I talk about a spiritual relationship, I'm not talking about God just zeroing in on your spiritual and saying, well, this is all you're going to get. No, but God covers all of your life. But people struggle. People struggle in areas of life because Satan is skilled in messing with people's mind. Did you know, did you know that one out of every five Americans have some type of a mental disorder. Now, if you're sitting on a pew this morning with five people on it, do not start counting <laughs> and wondering who it is. Uh -oh. 
Did you know that 75% of people who have a nervous breakdown never fully recover? Did you know that 85% of the American people, according to statistics now, have bitterness and hatred and jealousy in their hearts towards somebody or towards something? I want a miracle. Uh, Brother Mark and tell my miracle is more important to me than my bitterness. See, you got to make some room for God. Ah, but Brother Holly, you don't know what they did. I don't care what they did. There was a Christ called Jesus uh, that hung on the cross uh, and they beat him until the little strings of meat held. Uh, Brother, Brother Smith, there was pieces of skin and meat that hang like a bloody ribbon. They plucked his beard. Uh, they put a crown on his head and they twisted it until it went through the epidermis uh, into the dermis uh, and to the very skull uh, and it squeaked like a wagon wheel uh, that needed to be greased. Oh my God. But he hung there and said, Forgive them, Father. I want to tell you, you got to get it out. If God's going to get something into your life and take you to another dimension, you got to get it out. I don't care what it is. I'm getting this bitterness out. I'm getting this hatred out. I'm getting this animosity out. Why? Because if God's going to work in my life, i got to make some room for it. Praise God. Several years ago, I was asked to speak at a sectional men's fellowship, and they asked me to speak on this subject. Why is it so hard for me to believe God for my miracle? So we, we discussed it in great depth that night. So I came back to our home church, and I called a men's meeting. I said, we are going to talk about why we can't get miracles in our life. And I just hold your hand a minute, okay, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And we went in depth with why I can't get my answer. Why I can't have a miracle in my life. Tell me why. And I got one boy, Brother Martin Holmes. I don't know if Brother, Brother Markentale remembers him. He sits kind of in the back. And he just as country as cornbread. Kind of has like a, a Peter uh, mentality. He just speaks out. He said, well, Brother Holly, the reason it's hard for me to believe God, he said, I got a bad past. I said, well, have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? I knew we had. Because he got the Holy Ghost since I've been there. He said, yes, sir, I got the Holy Ghost. I said, well, have you been baptized in Jesus' name? And I knew he had because we went down to Black Creek and I baptized him in Black Creek. We got a baptistry in our church, but he wanted to be baptized in running water because he wanted to make sure those sins got away. <laughs> I said, Brother Martin, have you spoken? Oh, yes, sir. 
I have. I said, well, you're dealing with something that's already under the blood. I want to tell some of you in this building this morning that your sins of the past is under the blood. The shouting ground. Because some of you ain't been pretty as you are this morning. Some of you ain't have been where used to be where you are right now. You come a long way, baby. And God's done some good stuff for your life. The shouting ground. Quit reaching through the blood. I said, quit reaching through the blood. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Satan, you done got, you done messed with the wrong one. Cause greater is he that lives within me than what you're trying to take me down with. Amen. It was from my past failures. My past mistakes, my past sins, and boy, it got deep there. I, I, I was almost said, shh. Well, some of them got talking about what they did. I thought, man. Oh, y'all are laughing at me right now. But I guarantee you, you could stand up and I'd have to go, shh, to you too. Because oh, some has brought you, a, for God has brought some of you a long, long, long way. Can I, uh, can I tell you this morning uh, that when you see me shouting, uh, I'm not only shouting for what, for what God's given me, but I'm going to shout because of what God's taken away from me. Cause you don't know like I know what is done for me. Ha. You don't know like I know what, what has he done? He filled me with the Holy Ghost. That's what he's done for me. Praise God. And so what happens in these situations is that we get to looking back over how bad we was. And I'm just going to bring it on down. Sometimes we can do some stupid stuff when we get the Holy Ghost. Dumb. Y'all ain't shouting high then. And simply because we have thoughts. Brother Martin said, Brother Holly, you wouldn't believe some of the thoughts I have. I'm trying, I'm trying to get on. Brother Martin, you need to shut your mouth up. So I told Brother Martin that night, I said, Brother Martin, you can't help a bird from flying over your head. But you can keep that bird from building a nest in your hair. Yes. The devil's going to put thoughts in your mind. The devil's going to put ideas in your mind. The devil's going to put temptations before you. The devil's going to come and try to fight you every time. Some of the worst fusses you, you'll ever have with your husband and wife and children are right before you come to church. Yeah. You know, we, we got dual personalities. Listen to me. Listen to me. There could be pure hell going on in your house. I'm tired of picking up after you. I wish you'd just help me out a little bit. I had to carry the garbage out. Where are you, where are you kids, man? I'm telling you the truth. I, and, and, go, and the phone ring. We go, Hello. Oh, nothing. We was just cleaning house. You. <laughs> I 
And with us living in what we call this flesh, sometimes it's hard to believe that there is a God that can look beyond our faults and see every need and see every situation. I want to preach to you this morning that He's still your God in the middle of your mess. And, and what happens is when we get this mentality that, that I'm not, God, there's no way you can bless me. We find ourselves getting lost in the crowd. We find ourselves getting lost in a church service because we've had some problems. Because we've had some temptations. Because we've had a knock down and drag out, we used to call it. That's because our mind did drift somewhere. That's because I did have a thought. I, I have a preacher friend. And he said many years ago as a boy, he was living for God. Two of his brothers was not living for God. And he said he walked by their door. And he seen one of them stick something between the mattresses. So they left, and him, you know, curiosity went in there, and he pulled out the book, and it was a, a Playboy magazine. And he said he saw a picture that literally startled him, and he threw that magazine back, and he's preaching one of our conferences, our United Pentecostal Church conferences. And he is sitting on the pew or the, the, the seat waiting for them to turn a service over to him that he's going to be preaching to 20,000 people or maybe plus. And do you know what comes in his mind? That picture that he had seen when he was a little boy and he thought, my God, how in the world am I going to get up and am I, I'm going to preach and I'm having this picture, this mental picture in my head. How in the world? And the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said, leave it up to me. somebody that you need to put some stuff in the hands of God and let him take care of it all. Oh, I, I, I need to hurry. I, I need to. Amen. We praise God with people when they get a blessing. I love to see people shout. I know it's not all in the shout. I, I, I know that. I've been doing this a long time. And I know it ain't all in the hoop and the holler. But I'm going to tell you something. It just feels good. When I tell you, it just feels, I, I was preaching uh, just a few few nights ago at a place, and, and, and I, the Holy Ghost was moved. I wish, I, I just felt like doing the moonwalk. <laughs> and I like to kill my ankles when I did it. You, you know what? You get, in, you get in the presence of stuff that makes you feel bad all the time. You get up in the morning, you look at the, you, oh Lord, another long day. Or, or maybe there's a family situation. Maybe the boys left home. Maybe the son. Maybe they're all scattered from here to there. And you get up and there's so much bad stuff. Oh, but when you start thinking about the goodness of God, you ought to step into it. Because He's your God too. 
Oh, uh, let, 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 let me hurry just a little. Mike, come on, praise him one more time. Hi. All over the building, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But when we get lost, when we get lost in the crowd, when we find ourselves up in the grandstand and we're watching everybody down, uh, down in the arena as they are being blessed and God's, God's healing them and God's giving them a financial blessing and God's bringing their lost son home and their lost daughter to the altar, we find ourselves saying, God, I don't understand. I've tried. I know I've made a lot of mistakes. I know I've messed up from time to time. But God, and I rejoice with brother so-and-so and and sister so-and-so. And and I give praise with them and along with them because of what you're doing. But God, what about me? I need a miracle. I need a touch. How I'd love... Oh, I feel it. Can I tell you that your son is not out of reach? Can I tell you that your daughter is not out of reach? Because when the storm gets bad enough, yeah, ya. Oh, don't ever forget he's in the boat. And if you'll get a hold of him and say, Lord, you're my God too. I'm telling you, he will stand and he will stand. He will step out on the bow of that vessel and say, Peace be still. We have more today than we've ever had before. And yet there's more unhappiness in people. There's more unrest in people. I want you to just turn to somebody and say, there's something wrong. Come on. If it's by your eye, you need to look in her eye. Look him in. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. Amen. We have word about our sicknesses. We have word about our finances. We have word about our family. We have word about our situations. We have beat our altars. We have wallowed in the floor. And we come up saying, God, just I guess this is the way God was meant for me to be the rest of my life. This may be the, just the thorn in the flesh. You ever heard that? We have allowed our feelings to dictate to us our life. I have a man, he hadn't been able to be in church for some times. I call him Brother E. His name is A.E. Meadows. Brother E. has had a stroke. He can't walk. He's in a wheelchair. You can walk by him and say, Brother E., how you doing? And he'll look at me and say, just right. I mean, that, I don't care if he just got out of the hospital. I don't care if he's in pain. I don't care what's going on. He said, just right. Just right. Just right. Somebody say it with me. Just right. What are you saying, Brother Holly? When you've got God in your boat, don't you let that thing dictate to you and say, oh, you want, oh, Don't you let your situation dictate to you. Don't you let that sickness dictate. Don't you let that circumstance dictate to you how you feel when you come to church. We let our problems dictate to us how we come to church. I I don't want to be ugly. Somebody asked me the other day, said, Brother... Brother Holly said, how did you stay at that church 34 years? I said, well, it wasn't because I did stupid things. I tried to use a little sense. I love people and all of that. But it doesn't take me but just walk into the platform. I don't have to be preaching. I don't have to have the anointing on me. I can look out across my congregation and I can tell you, 
if somebody's had a bad hair day. I'm having less bad hair days than ever before because I'm having less hair. So we allow the situation, the circumstance, the finances, whatever it is, to dictate to us when we come to church. Well, you just better be glad I'm here, bless God. Huh. You don't know how bad I feel. So I'm just going to walk in here. And I'm going to feel like that I've done God a privilege just by getting up and getting my carcass clothed. Uh -uh. That little woman with the issue of blood, she was sick for 12 years. She had to push through the crowd. She had to be knocked around. She no doubt was weak. She no doubt had some pain going on. She no doubt was in one of the worst conditions because she spent all of her money and nothing had gotten any better. And she was dying. But she said, if I can just get to church. If I can just get in the presence of God. I'll get my spring back. I'll be all right. I'll get my shout back. I know I've been sad for a little bit. Ah, but I feel something springing up. I'm about to get up. I may not touch him the first time, but I'm going to reach out again. I may not feel it the first few minutes, but somebody is going to have to try to shut me up because I'm not shutting up today because I've got to have a miracle. Praise God. We have allowed our feelings. Everybody say my feelings. You don't ask folks anymore how they're doing. I've learned, hi, 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 ho, ho, I'm gone. Because when you stop and ask them how you feel it, oh, man, I've had a hacking cough. I've had indigestion in the lower tract. I've had diarrhea. I just tell you, brother, you just don't know what I've been through. Where are the people that in the midst of their mess they can walk in and not allow what they've been through to dictate to them what I'm going to do for God today? If I could challenge this church when you don't feel like it, Give it that extra mile. Just don't go the first mile. I don't feel it. I don't see it. I don't understand it. But i tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to shout tonight if nobody else shouts. I'm going to praise God if nobody else lifts their hand. I'm going to have a breakthrough. Church, this church cannot hold the people that God... Oh, y'all got, got to hear me when I'm about to say this. This church cannot hold the people that God wants to give this church. Don't, don't, don't shout about that. Just hush a minute. But they're not going to come in to a church 
where everybody's got more problems than they've got. Look across the aisle and somebody has, looks like they've lost their best friend. Watch a congregation that, that, that's twice dead and plucked up by the roots. But they want something that will deliver them from that alcohol. Ah. The Bible calls us lively stones. And he said, if you hold your peace, I'll walk out into the parking lot and I'll cause rocks to begin, begin to give me praise. Somebody has got to stop going by your feelings and just know that God is going to do great things. I might not see it today, but I believe tomorrow. And if I don't see it tomorrow, I believe it's going to happen. Praise God. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm about to close. Amen. And so we've allowed, we've allowed our feelings to dictate to us how we feel, how we come to church, how we worship when we come to church, and how we act when we leave the church. That's a message right there. Amen. And I won't get into that. Mm. It's more than just coming to church and shout until a bobby pin falls out. Or you lather up like a Tennessee were a, uh, race or Sister, I'm not ready yet. I'm just telling them to make them feel better. Brother Smith, when my foot steps outside these doors, I should be a threat to the devil. I'm just not going to come to church and go through the little Pentecostal protocols. But when I leave this place, uh, devil, you're not staying in my house. I'll anoint every door in my home. I'll cast out every spirit. You're not going to get in the car with me no more. You're not going to follow me to my job. Ah, ah, I'm about to come. I'm about to proclaim war. I'm about to fight. Like I've never fought before. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Uh, devil, you're not going to back me in the corner anymore. But I'm about to back you in the corner. When I can't handle it, I'm going to sit Jesus on you. And I know that he can take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. You, you may be seated. Just a few days ago, I read the account of Calvary. Oh, it's tremendous when you open your heart and read. It's, it's, it's almost unbelievable, and it's almost too amazing to believe everything. There was three on the, on the hillside. They were being all were going to be crucified. One on the left looked at Jesus and he said, if you are who you say you are, why don't you get me out of my mess? And can I tell you that there's a lot of folks, and I'm not saying this church, they're all back in my home church. Every one of them. But there are folks in my church, all they want God to do is get them out of a mess. 
Many of them are inflicted by their own doings. So one of them said, if you're who you are. But Mark tell, if God's what you say he is. You get up there and preach, God can deliver. Fear, why don't you do it? And all we want is something to scratch our ego. And I want to say this. And I'm not being ugly. Turn to somebody and say, he ain't, he ain't ugly. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. You have got to understand that living for God is more than getting you out of trouble. You see, a lot of people want connections with the church. But not many people want commitment to the church. I'm preaching to some of you in here, and if those that are not here was here, I'd preach to them too. That you just can't want the five loaves and the two fishes. You've got to walk when you don't feel them. You gotta walk when everything's down. But that is not the point. You gotta have a right spirit when you face your situations. Praise God. Praise God. I, I, I'm really, I am, I am closing. But one on the right got a revelation. You know what we need? We need a fresh revelation and a fresh rebirth of what this thing is all about. It ain't about you. It ain't about me. But it's about him. And that one on the right got a revelation. And he said, he kind of hushed the other one up. He said, hey, bud, shut up. Now, that would be in Mississippi language. Just shut up. That's pretty blunt, isn't it? Just shut up. What does that mean? Shut up! And he said, wait a minute, bud. He said, we deserve what we're on. Me and you, we should be crucified. But that man, he has done nothing. And then he, then he gets a revelation. <laughs> he says, hey, Jesus. He said, remember. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus never turned his eyes toward the one that was saying, if you're Jesus... You who you say you are, get me out of this mess. He never turned his head to the left to look at him. But I believe that when that man said that, he turned his, he said, This day shalt thou be with me in paradise. Brother Mercantile, I can't help but believe that somewhere he... Oh, Brother Smith, I believe somewhere he was in the crowd when a blinded eye was open. He may have been walking down the cobblestone streets when they stopped the funeral possession. He said, get up, boy. You're the only, you're the only child that your mama's got. Get up, go home with her. Ah, and something in him said, he's going to be my God today. You can spit on the ground, make a spittle of clay and touch the blinded eyes. But today you're going to be my God. See, you've got to get him out of the past and you've got to get him out of the future. And you've got to pull him right into right now. Uh, 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 there is nothing. There is nothing. Everybody say it with me. There is nothing that my God 
If he's done it for others, right now, I'm believing God. Oh, my God, have mercy. Let me close. Got a revelation of who Jesus was. Three of them. One of them died in sin. One of them died from sin. And one of them died for sin. I want to ask you this morning, what do you really want? Do you want the, just the Pentecostal, traditions and I've been raised in all my life I, I slept under pews old slat pews I watched them shout mama laid me on a blanket that's how long I've been in the church brother Smith and those old those old floors they'd get to shouting and you could see dust literally coming up from the cracks I'm laying there watching all this and Next service, you'd have a testimony service, and somebody said, Oh, I tell you, the power of God was in this place so much you could almost see the, a haze. And I thought, No, that wasn't no haze. <laughs> I watched it. <laughs> I've been raised in this. I know how to shiver a little bit when I don't feel very much. <laughs> Like I just fell off a turnip truck. <laughs> Let me just say it the way we would say it back. We've learned how to do some stuff. But I'm called in this church to a vision to give God the very best you've got out yonder and then walk in here and give Him the very best you've got in here. Because if you will give him the very best you have out yonder and in here, he will go out yonder and he will take care of the problems that are burdening you down. I challenge this church this morning. Don't be a grandstand applauder. Don't get lost in the mixed. Don't get lost in the traditions. Thank God for our teachings. Thank God for our, if we want to call them standards. Some of them are good and some of them I don't agree with, but we call them standards. I thank God for all of that. But I want somebody. I, I got to say this. You might not come back tonight, but if you don't, I know you're guilty. Brother, brother, brother Clark, uh, bro, brother Smith, brother Mark and Tell, I want to say this very submissive and very humbly. But some of you have lost your thankfulness for what God has done for your. You feel like God owes you something. I want to say that again. Some of you, you've lost your thankfulness and you feel like they owe you something. They owe you something. They you owe you And God owes you something. And if you don't get what you think you are deserving of, you get your nest all messed up. But the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you right now, if you will become thankful, and I give you the scripture. David said, I will enter his gates with what? And I will enter his courts with praise. Now, why did he say it like that? You show me a person that is really thankful. 
for God. I will show you a person you can't keep their hands down. He loves you. You show me a person that's thankful. I'll show you a person that walks in and says, if you don't worship, and you don't worship, and you don't worship, and you don't worship, I can't help it. But I'm thankful because he brought me out. He's filled me with the Holy Ghost. He hasn't answered all my prayers, but I've got them on the altar. And they're going to be answered before long. Oh. If you'll show me a person that's thankful, I'll show you a person that you can't keep away from your church. Why? Because it's a part of our lives. Praise God.